Somebody's got some splaining to do. <laughs> it's Don Friel, boing! And I with my levitational power. So if you're here today and you thought, I can't be forgiven, I'm too bad of a sinner. You don't know how good of a savior Jesus is. No matter who you are, no matter what you have done, where sin did abound, grace abounds that much more. Hello, and welcome to Wretched. My name is Todd Friel. I am your host, the wretch. The song refers to, uh, hey, what about the Crusades? The Bible's got tons of mistakes. It was translated like a telephone game. Maybe, just maybe, it is time for us to turn the tables on atheists who have been making plenty of accusations against Christians and Christianity because atheists have some splaining to do. Human zoos. How do you explain those? Not familiar with the concept? There's a brand new DVD by the same title from our good buddy John G. West of the Discovery Institute, The History of Anthropology. Atheists, you got some splaining to do. Anthropology was kind of founded on this idea of mapping um, civilization from the highest to the lowest, right? With the lowest at that time said to be Africans, and then you sort of move up. Leading men of science from Harvard and Princeton and Columbia University were saying that Africans were midway between an orangutan and a human being. Say it isn't so, Holland Oates. Anthropology built on racist ideologies. Harvard, Princeton, Columbia University, these august bodies filled with scientists called anthropologists, racist to the core. Do you remember Haeckel's embryos? It loaded in scientific textbooks to demonstrate that we evolved from the goo, the fellow who invented that discredited scheme, Ernst Haeckel. Did you know that he too was racist? Ernst Haeckel also is known for uh, his raving racism. And in fact, he had a graphic of the history of human evolution that in very pointed terms really embedded a racist view of human evolution. You had the Teutonic male on the top, the sort of the Germanic male, and then at the bottom you had some creatures that looked uh, partly like apes, partly like Jews. He was also anti-Semitic. And in the middle, you have the transition from the ape-like creatures to the first human creatures. The ape-like creatures look pretty much like they're Africans. And the takeaway point that Ernst Haeckel had from this graph was that the difference between the highest human being and the lowest human being, the gap between the highest Teutonic male and the first human being that was just one step above the apes, was larger than the gap between the lowest human being and the highest ape. Hmm. What about the Crusades and the awful atrocities of the Inquisitions? My dear atheist friend, as a Protestant, I do not need to defend anything Roman Catholic. Nevertheless, I got some questions pour vous about some history, specifically a fellow named William McGee and a little event called the World's Fair. McGee was determined to use primitive peoples at the fair to dramatize for the public the different stages of human evolution, beginning with races he considered lowest on the evolutionary scale. McGee arranged for native peoples to be put on display in villages designed to recreate their native habitats. These villages were enclosed by fences, making them truly seem like human zoos. More than four million fairgoers reportedly visited these anthropological displays, eagerly staring at and poking at the indigenous peoples in their enclosures. We don't even poke at the animals today. At the World Fair, they were poking at human beings that the anthropologists thought were subhuman. 
Those on display were also subjected to experiments in a special laboratory set up by the Fair's Anthropology Department. Directed by a psychology professor from Columbia University, the lab conducted tests to measure native people's intelligence and physical features, and even their threshold for pain. It wasn't a bunch of Baptists who created that display. It was a bunch of anthropologists doing experiments on human beings they didn't even think were human. That was from the anthropology department. But speaking of Baptists and other various and sundry Christians, what was their response to this display that poked through the bars at other people? New York's clergy, in particular, were horrified at what they saw as a dehumanizing spectacle. First to speak out was the Reverend Robert Stuart MacArthur, pastor of the city's Calvary Baptist Church, one of the largest Baptist congregations in America. The person responsible for this exhibition degrades himself as much as he does the African. Instead of making a beast of this little fellow, he should be put in school. That is a human named Ota Benga. The Baptists saw him behind bars and thought it was outrageous. African-American Christians, what did they think? Well, pretty much the same thing. Ministers from New York's African-American community soon organized a protest committee. After visiting the zoo and seeing Benga for themselves, they were horrified. They thought it was outrageous. They clearly saw a human being who appeared to be afraid, um, uh, who was being heckled and jeered at and things thrown at him, and he was being, you know, debased and, and, and on the hallowed grounds of the New York Zoological Society in, in New York City. The ministers demanded that Ota Benga be taken off display and be offered an education. New York Zoological Society put that African behind bars. Christians, are you kidding me? They had a young boy holding a monkey as if a blind man couldn't see the differences. How's about monkeys and their cognitive abilities? Not even close. Object permanence, they don't have it. Clearly there is a difference. Furthermore, the Bible tells us so, which is why historically Christians have defended life. The New York Zoological Society degraded it. We will continue the history of human zoos, specifically Ota Benga, a name that you should remember the next time you run into an atheist who goes, Hey, what about all the priests molesting boys in the church? Mm. Next, on Wretched. When Christian women are persecuted overseas for their faith, they are attacked, raped, forced to divorce, or give up custody of their children. Men experience economic harassment, imprisonment, forced military service, or they're just beat to death. Bible League International would like to bring them a Bible. Would you join them for just $5? You can bring a Bible to the persecuted church at wretched.org slash Bible. This is Brenda. Brenda visits Wretched.org daily. That's why Brenda has great hair and is at peace. The world could be crumbling around her, but Brenda just lays on the ground, reaching for the heavens. Would you like to be at peace and have better hair? Spend time at Wretched.org. Wretched. Amazing grace. Amazing hair. Welcome back to Wretched. Three names I would encourage you to memorize so that when you run into your next atheist who brings some accusations to tear down the veracity of Christianity, you could bring up these names. Name number one, Ota Benga, an African boy put on display as an animal attraction, like he's an animal in a zoo. 
how many people showed up to see the subhuman answer? A shocking amount. On Sunday, September 16th, 40,000 people converged on zoo grounds to see the city's newest sensation. According to press reports, the mobs chased Otabenga around the zoo all day, howling, jeering and yelling. Some of them poked him in the ribs, others tripped him, all laughed at him. Benga responded by shooting an arrow at his tormentors, after which zookeepers caught him and returned him to his cage. Remember the name Ota Benga. Names two and three, uh, the Reverend James H. Gordon preaching out against this racist display from unbelievers, clearly a reverend. It, it kind of tips his hand. He's a Christian, and who does he cite as the cause for this atrocious display of racism? Name number three, Charles Darwin. This is a Christian country, and the exhibition evidently aims to be a demonstration of the Darwinian theory of evolution. The Darwinian theory of evolution absolutely is opposed to Christianity, and a public demonstration in its favor should not be permitted. Neither the Negro nor the white man is related to the monkey. Such an exhibition only degrades a human being's manhood. Unbelievable. This is the history of our country. In the early 20th century, racist to the core. Why? Darwinian evolution. Charles Darwin himself, he was a thoroughgoing racist. It is no surprise that people took his theory that there are better people, better survivors, and quickly applied it to people with different skin colors. Why? Unfortunately, racism, it is a part of the fall, but you give unbelievers a supposed scientific ideology to somehow justify their racism, and they are off to the races. The Eugenics Congress at the American Museum of Natural History drew scientists from America's top research institutions, including Harvard, Yale, MIT, the Smithsonian, Ohio State, UC Berkeley, and the University of Texas. Participants included inventor Alexander Graham Bell and Charles Darwin's own son, Leonard, who lashed out at the threat biological defectives pose to modern society. Alexander Graham Bell, a racist! How <laughs> will I ever use my cell phone again? I'll find a way. However, Alexander Graham Bell, not the only racist, the fellow who headed up the Natural Museum of History with three names, Henry Fairfield Osborne, got into a little squabble with another man with three names, William Jennings Bryan. Scientists were welcomed to the Eugenics Congress by then President of the American Museum of Natural History, Henry Fairfield Osborne. A future head of the American Association for the Advancement of Science, Osborne had become one of the most celebrated scientific champions of evolution in America. Soon he would become embroiled in a controversy with politician William Jennings Bryan over a fossilized tooth discovered in Nebraska. Osborne insisted that the tooth supplied irrefutable evidence of the existence of man-like apes in ancient North America. To his embarrassment, the tooth later turned out to be part of an extinct pig. A hoax didn't keep these scientists from keeping that supposed evidence in the textbooks. You, you, you gotta have something to support your racist ideologies. Permit me to introduce you now, fast forwarding into the 21st century, another three-named person, Sharon Weston Broom. Sharon Weston Broom is mayor of Baton Rouge, Louisiana. In 2001, she was a member of the Louisiana House of Representatives when she proposed a resolution to encourage teaching students about the history of scientific racism. The resolution highlighted Darwin's views on race, as well as how his views had been exploited by other scientists, such as Ernst Haeckel, to promote racism. 
The resolution also encouraged teaching students more recent scientific findings supporting racial equality. Broom's resolution provoked a firestorm, with supporters of Darwin's theory accusing her of trying to unfairly malign Charles Darwin. This resolution is not only a product of creationists, but also Christian supremacists. And Christian supremacism is a hate-based ideology, and you can't combat hatred with hatred. I never, ever have emulated any type of hate towards anyone. The resolution only passed after all references to Darwin and Haeckel were deleted. It was as if scientific racism had never happened. See no evil. Hear no evil, I believe atheists have some splaining to do. And talk about a trope, trotting out the, hey, you're opposed to Darwin just because you're a Christian. You think he's racist just because you're a follower of Jesus Christ. No, no we think he's racist because, you know, he was racist. And now, Another three-named human being introduced to the mix, Stephen J. Gould. I certainly understand that racism was in effect before Darwin. This has never been denied. Yet he was the originator of a scientific justification for racism as well as giving wings to modern racism. Harvard University Stephen J. Gould wrote, quote, biological arguments for racism may have been common before 1859, but they increased by orders of magnitude following the acceptance of evolutionary theory. You do not need to have three names to remember. In the 20th century, racism flourished because of Charles Darwin's theory and a lack of a belief in God. We will continue studying human zoos. <laughs> We're making this up next on Wretched. I was pregnant, I was actually freaking out. I was gonna get an abortion. Being able to have an ultrasound, it's, it's really exciting because then you can actually see that your baby is there. If you had any doubt of anything before, when you see the ultrasound, you know, it, it makes it real. Welcome back to our Wretched. Here's a little difference between atheism and Christianity. We Christians, when other professing believers do something atrocious, we can say that's not in alignment with the Christian faith. How do atheists respond when they are accused of evil doings in generations past by people who espouse their same beliefs? Well, we just, we'll just sweep those right under the rug. In 2007, the Kansas State Board of Education rewrote a statewide curriculum standard about the history of science. The standard originally called for students to understand both the positive and negative aspects of science on society, including how science can be abused. As examples of the abuse of science, the original standard cited the eugenics movement, scientific racism, and the infamous Tuskegee syphilis experiment, where government researchers left poor black men untreated for syphilis in order to observe the progression of the disease. The Kansas Board of Education revised the curriculum standard to eliminate any study of the abuses of science. Now students would only learn about how science had improved society. Shh. Be very, very quiet. 
How unfortunate is history? It is in the textbooks. It is undeniable, and yet it is being denied by atheists who refuse to accept any responsibility for the scientific community's absolute, undeniable use of racism to do atrocious things like they did with the Museum of Natural History. The American Museum of Natural History remains one of the world's leading science museums. But to this day, it has never apologized for the role it played in promoting the international eugenics movement. It has also tried to downplay the role of scientists in promoting scientific racism. In 2005, the museum mounted a major new exhibition on the life and legacy of Charles Darwin. The exhibition is still available today as a traveling exhibit. The exhibit contains a section on social Darwinism that fails to acknowledge any involvement by the scientific community in either eugenics or scientific racism. Even more glaringly, the exhibit also fails to disclose the museum's own role in promoting social Darwinist policies like eugenics. According to the current exhibit, social Darwinism had no real connection with either Darwin or science. Or forced sterilization. Are you kidding me? Sterilization, which, by the way, took place in this country up until the 1970s, was solidly grounded in Darwinian evolution. You can't have those useless feeders. Three generations of imbeciles, that's enough. Where did those horrific ideas come from? Um, not the Gospels. Furthermore, if you think, well, okay, this was a few people who did this, this was not a few people at all. The early scientists of the 20th century, it was thorough. Racism dominated their thinking when it came to issues of race, racism, who's better, who's more fit, and who's not. This was not a fringe movement. If you read the scientists of the day, in the late 19th and early 20th century, many of them were uh, promoting racism and even racial extermination, extinction of races. They were promoting uh, the gaining of living space. They were promoting competition. The things that we know of as social Darwinism, these were things being promoted by Charles Darwin himself to some degree. Many other leading biologists, Ernst Haeckel in Germany, uh, and many others, uh, you could go on and on. And by the 1920s and 30s, they were becoming uh, very prominent. If you look in, especially in the field of anthropology and evolutionary anthropology, uh, many of them were promoting social Darwinism. This was not just an idea of some cranks uh, or some political people that didn't really understand the science. This was an idea that was very prominent in scientific circles. How do Christians respond to atrocities committed by other professing Christians? We hate it. We denounce it. We make it clear that they were not acting in alignment with Christian beliefs. We can say that. Atheists cannot say that about Charles Darwin. The eugenics movement, racism and anthropology. Why? Because if they dare demonstrate there's a chink in the evolutionary armor, the whole system can go kafritz. If Charles Darwin can rightly be labeled a racist, which he absolutely was, then what else about Charles Darwin are we to not believe? Is he a reliable source? And there is no way they are going to give up that ground because Charles Darwin, if there is a demigod in the pantheon of atheist heroes, it is he because it gives them supposedly a scientific method to suppress the truth in unrighteousness and that is what this is all about human zoos from the discovery institute well worth watching with your kids who will run into atheists who will dare to accuse christianity of our atrocious past and we can turn those tables and ask the atheists to do some splaining about their history surprise Next, on Wretched. 
And yet another bleak Eastern European village, poverty, alcoholism, unemployment, and very little joy, yet there is hope. The Tomorrow Club's bringing the gospel to children in poor Eastern European villages. Over a thousand of them are sponsored by wretches. And to you, these kids would say, Thank you! Please sponsor a club at tomorrowclubs.org slash wretched. Just reading a blog of a university evangelist who claims the Christian kids who went to youth group but now are not professing the name of Jesus Christ were highly influenced by, you guessed it, Darwinian evolution. That pseudo-scientific theory is stealing our kids. We would like to get them back. One million copies of this booklet, which deals with evolution, could be distributed if you're willing to be the hands and feet. Are you prepared to do an outreach? Will you go with some friends? We'll send these to you for free. And you can give away the gospel to kids who are very lost at wretched.org slash purple. Welcome back to a sort of wretched surprise from Human Zoos, the Discovery Institute. Racism, it is a part of the fall. Charles Darwin, he gave scientists permission to be racist, but that does not mean that racism is not alive and well today, thanks to Charles Darwin. The recent resurgence of white supremacist groups in America has raised chilling echoes of the past. Evolutionary arguments for racism that were rejected by the scientific community are now being resurrected by modern racists. Richard Spencer is a leader of the so-called alt-right. He argues that, quote, Darwinism offers a compelling and rational justification for whites to act on behalf of their ancestors and progeny and feel a shared sense of destiny with their extended kin group." Unquote. In a 2017 study, more than 400 self-identified members of the alt-right revealed that they view blacks, Mexicans, and other racial and ethnic groups as less evolved and closer to humans' ape-like ancestors than whites. The misuse of science to promote racism is no longer just a sad relic of our history. It's also an uncomfortable part of our present. And how do we Christians respond to the alt-right? We call it what it is, sin. To believe that other people are less than you because of their pigmentation, the Bible never endorses that ideology. Instead, the Bible makes it clear there are not multiple races. There is one race, the human race, and yes, there's different shades of skin color, but that does not make somebody less than you because they don't match you. It is only the Bible that puts the kibosh on racism. It is most certainly not atheistic science. Until tomorrow, go serve your king. Congratulations to George Harris. You're the winner of today's free download, Snatch Them from the Flames. You could win free stuff too if you sign up for the free Wretched newsletter at wretched.org. Wretched, amazing grace.